if you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or any cheap PC games, use the referral link in the description. It will take you over to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods. And if you use the code CHEZ at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 7 of the Valencia career mode here on FIFA 16. We start with a home game against Real Betis in La Liga. Now in the last episode, we had a good result and we had a not so good result. Our first game in Europe wasn't necessarily the best and uh, we uh, were trying, st well, we're still experimenting with uh, the formation and the uh, the personnel within that formation in this first team. As we try and find our feet here at Valencia, we've started well domestically. We are in the top four, so I'd like to continue that in today's episode if we possibly could. We're starting against uh, a strong Betis, so they've got experience up top in Ruben Castro and on the right-hand side in the shape of Joaquin, who's on the ball now, uh, formerly of Fiorentina and Valencia and plenty of other teams actually throughout his career. He has played for quite a few. Ruben Castro with the first chance there, and then for some reason, Andre Gomez... Is, uh, I attempted pass, made him just turn rather than uh, pass it. I wanted to play the pass out from the back, out wide to the man that was free on the right-hand side. And uh, he just turned and got tackled. So Ruben Castro stuck a toe in, dropped to the Batiste man that was free in the box. And in fairness, very, very good uh, strike towards the far top corner. And uh, we were lucky, actually, not to go 2-0 down there. Could say by Diego Alves pushing that one onto the post to stop them from uh, extending their lead. Time for us to get going at the other end of the pitch. So Hugo Mayo turns his side quite nicely. Holds off the defender really well. Gets it into Danny Pereira, who gets a turn in. And then it's our turn to hit the woodwork. We, though, don't get a lucky rebound. And Heiko Vesterman is able to, uh, to slash it clear. It was bouncing back towards his own goal after coming off either he or his goalkeeper. I couldn't quite make out who in the, the scramble there in the box. But Parejo to Faguli, lovely ball back to Paco Alcacer. But a good shot is well saved again by Adan, the goalkeeper. We can't seem to get ourselves an equaliser right now. You can see how frustrated Paco is after that one was headed towards the bottom corner. But we'll have a corner itself. Danny Parejo stands the ball into the box. Paco up again with a header. And again, Adan with a very good save. He's an extremely good player, Paco. And uh, we just haven't quite been able to find the goal scoring vein of four with him just yet most of our goals have come from our midfield either Danny Parejo or Enzo Perez who's coming onto the pitch here for Thiago who hasn't yet found the uh, the back of the net for his, uh, his new side but I'm sure it won't be long before he does Enzo Perez now in the stoppage time at the end of the second half gets tackled but he doesn't give up chases after one ball chases after the second steals it off Joaquin he's powering into the box holds the man off holds the man off holds the man off and fires it into the back of the net underneath the goalkeeper into the back of the uh, the right corner to make it 1-1 with practically the last kick of the game just absolute determination from Enzo Perez not to give up in that run and fires it into the bottom corner to give us a point from a game that I don't know whether we deserved all three or not. We definitely had decent chances, but I guess so did they. They scored a decent goal and uh, although be it a lucky goal and uh, hit the woodwork as well. But we hit the post. Paco Alcatel had a couple of really good chances as well, but sadly it wasn't to be. We still sit in sixth though, but we have a game in hand on a few teams above us and can move up into the top three with victory here away from home against Espanyol. They're obviously the second side in Barcelona behind FC Barcelona, but they're not to be underestimated. They can be a very strong side in, uh, in career mode and they're a decent side in real life as well. They always seem to threaten that they could potentially push for Europa League spot and then every now they just kind of seem to fall off towards the end of uh, towards the end of the season but as you can see now we're playing a different style of 4-3-3 we're playing the attacking 4-3-3 with two centre mids and a cam it's more similar to my preferred 4-2-3-1 formation that I, uh, I tend to play in the majority of my career modes. So I was hoping that this version of the 4-3-3 would actually lead us to be slightly more attacking and uh, hopefully a bit more solid defensively as well. Although we haven't really conceded that many goals so far this year. We just needed to make sure we scored a few more at the other end. We uh, had a good shot there, well saved. And then uh, Rodrigo de Paul tried his absolute best to uh, to score with uh, an overhead kick but couldn't quite get the connection. Enzo Perez, scored top goal scorer so far this season now after picking one up against their Betis and he couldn't quite squeeze that one in the bottom corner either. De Paul whips in the cross to the back post. Javi Fuego brings it down. His first touch is terrible but it does drop to uh, Pablo Piatti. Then Fuego's shot is well saved and again De Paul with the acrobatic attempted shot but again for the second time couldn't get his technique right and uh, we stayed at 0-0 as we headed into the second half. Xiao Cancelo though pushing forward from right back. I do have very adventurous right back. Xiao Cancelo and 
Uh, Hugo Mayo do like to get forward, but guess who scored the goal? Enzo Perez. Now, playing him at that cam spot in this particular game, we've got a game against Manchester City coming up very shortly, not in today's episode. It's the next game of tomorrow's episode, the first game of tomorrow's episode. So uh, we're playing a rotation side here. He's been, a re weirdly, in this series and in the uh, career mode RTG, the return to glory with Nottingham Forest, uh, both months of August and September have been ridiculously busy with games every weekend and weekday. Fortunately, we have the squad depth to deal with it here at uh, Valencia and Alvaro Negredo with a really impressive strike actually on his left hand side which is clearly his strongest foot but powers around the outside, he's not the fastest, just gets the turn on and then, well, the placement on the shot is absolutely perfect. Couldn't have asked for more from Alvaro Negredo there. That made it 2-0 and we were really in control. Now Javi Fuego showing great dribbling feet to get past the defender. Sprays it out wide to Negredo, plenty of space here for De Paul on the right hand side as well. He's going to turn inside the final defender, get the shot off but it's straight down the throat of the goalkeeper we aren't able to extend our lead to three just yet Enzo Perez though on the ball here in stoppage time scored a goal in stoppage time in the previous game uh, Zachariah Bacali came on in the second half he's not the strongest I can't say as I'm overly enjoying playing with Bacali but uh, I will continue to play with him continue to train him and hopefully he'll improve De Paul is definitely my preference in that wide position as a for uh, rotation he and Pablo Piatti are better than Zachariah Bacali but Despite De Paul's another attempt, this time a much better connection and much better shot. We weren't able to extend the lead, but we do get a 2-0 victory, which is fantastic. We'll take that uh, to uh, go towards our league tally. You can see that moves us up to fifth, but we do continue to have a game in hand on uh, Atleti and Sevilla and Madrid and Barcelona. So if we win here... We can again potentially go up into the top three. Uh, continuing to play this 4-3-3 with the attacking cam. It worked very well against uh, against Espanyol. So we'll try it again here against Granada. Again, it's a bit of a rotation side though. Unfortunately, uh, there was a week's break between the previous game and this one. But we have Manchester City in three days' time. So I continue to have to play uh, a weaker side here to uh, make sure that we can play our strongest possible eleven against Manchester City, especially considering we lost our opening uh, Champions League game of the season away from home against PSV. So we need an improvement in uh, the Champions League, but we need to basically just continue what we've, we've been doing domestically in La Liga. Unfortunately, Javi Fuego's shot there wasn't necessarily the best, almost accurate, but Granada were going to come forward next. Ruben Perez on the ball, threads it through to a man in the middle, and then it uh, is so narrowly put wide by their striker. He really should have done better there. I tried to be a little bit cheeky here with this free kick with Thiago it perhaps was a little bit too close to actually try it but I thought I could try and bend it around the bottom of the wall and get it to whip in the bottom corner but unfortunately Thiago despite having about 83 curve I think it is in his stats uh, wasn't quite able to uh, get it to come back around and into the back of the net Thiago's played through here though Zach by Zachariah Bacali turns his side nicely and that is a much better finish from the young Spaniard that's his first goal for Valencia and it's enough to give us a 1-0 lead six minutes into the second half here at home against Granada the uh, the crowd at the Mestalla makes such a great roar whenever a goal goes in. It's really, really uh, fantastic to listen to. I don't know whether you can hear it because I obviously lower the uh, the background audio when uh, I do commentaries, etc. But when I play and I'm listening to the game audio, it sounds fantastic. Hopefully that comes across in the episodes because the, the crowd at the Mestalla go absolutely mad. I love having the Mestalla and Ultimate Team as well as my uh, my main ground because uh, because of that reason. But unfortunately, they were silenced a few moments later. We went 1-0 up and then they immediately went up the other end and equalised after not really threatening for the entirety of the game other than that one shot in the first half that went narrowly wide Pablo Piatti though went, came off the bench went on a really nice run here into Javi Fuego first shot is well blocked, second shot is well saved but it drops very kindly to Alvaro Negredo who from six yards out, substitute onto the pitch this time rather than starting. Scores the goal to give us a 2-1 win at home against Granada. So I'm glad that we're grinding out wins with our weaker side. So uh, that really does bode well for the rest of the uh, domestic season in La Liga. And hopefully our strongest eleven can do the business against Manchester City in uh, the Champions League in tomorrow's episode. But we are now fourth in the league and uh, only two points off top. Level on points with Atleti, but they obviously have a better goal difference than us. And we haven't played them yet for the head ahead. Uh, Madrid and uh, Barcelona though first and second as you might expect. You'd probably say the top four is how you may have expected it would finish this season. So we'll have to wait and see if the league has already been predicted after six games whether it's exactly the same after 38. Time will tell with Barca top, Real second, Atleti third, us fourth, uh, Sevilla fifth and Sociedad sixth. Perhaps Villarreal might want to uh, get themselves into sixth spot. Sociedad under David Moyes before he got sacked. 
uh, weren't having the best of times of things. But in FIFA, they uh, they do fulfil the potential of the players they have in that squad. So they are a difficult test to uh, to play against. But we haven't played them yet. But I'm not sure when we do play them actually. But we've got Manchester City next, and uh, that will be the first game in tomorrow's episode. But thank you very much for watching today's episode. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed, of course, and subscribe if you haven't already. Plenty of stuff on the channel page to watch if you missed any videos over the past few days. This series, the My Player, or the Career Mode RTG with Nottingham Forest, to so check that out and all the links to social media are uh, on your screen right now and in the description down below to Twitter, to Instagram, to Facebook, etc. Twitter's the best place if you want to interact with me or, of course, you can interact with me in the chat on Twitch when I stream, which I will be doing later on tonight as well. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.